Hi, my name is Vladislav Kulikov and let's train Russian Sambo. Hi, my name is Vladislav Kulikov. I'm a chief instructor at Ultimate Sambo, Warwick, New York. And today we're going to take a look at uh, Sambo's arm locks, wrist locks and bicep crushes. The first technique, guys, we're going to cover is called jumping or flying armbar, or as we call it in authentic Sambo, a visulka, which means a hanger. The grip, you assume, is going to be uh, on a lapel and on a sleeve, like this. That's your regular grip from which you apply all your sweeps and takedowns and so forth. So this technique could be done as offensive, aggressive motion, or sometimes when the guy is leading and score, when he scored more points, what he does, he stiff arms you. He extends his arm and he makes it nearly impossible to throw him. So it's very hard to, you know, he knows he's leading and he keeps you away from getting you know, closing the distance on him and throwing him, so he stiff arms you. It's a very common situation, okay, the guys get passive. And if they want to, they can very well stay away from scoring any points on them. So you can do it, you know, regular, or you can do it against stiff arm. That's the very best uh, counter to stiff arm defense. So, the first thing you have to do, guys, normally when you throw, you grip like this, knuckles down. But for the arm bar, you have to switch your grip like this, knuckles up. Because once you're done, you have to slide and apply the arm bar. So it's easier, like such, okay? And once you're here, guys, uh, you cannot jump on your partner when he stands straight, because uh, what's gonna happen, he's gonna stay there if his base is good. You have to create uh, good conditions, okay? You have to catch him, we have to catch him when he's like moving, okay? Otherwise, he's gonna be too set in the ground and it's gonna be impossible. So you have to break his balance by pulling or take advantage of him pushing you or something. So that said, with the break and balance, here's the technique by itself. From this stance, right hand on lapel, left on the sleeve, you're gonna jump with your right leg first. Okay, your right leg goes first like this, and then your left leg leaves the ground. What you have to do, guys, you have to jump very, very high. The higher you jump on him, the more chances that you're gonna bend. Your weight is gonna pull him down like such. If I jump on Tim's waist, that's his center of gravity. I'm gonna jump and Tim is gonna hold me, okay? So uh, the main thing is just get rid of fear of jumping because once you jump, you don't look at the mat and it's very natural fear, uh, you know, to be afraid of hitting the mat. So once you get past that, you're gonna be good, okay? So make sure you're properly warmed up and you are doing this under supervision of an uh, instructor. So first leg goes like this and then my pelvic carry jumps real, real high, right on his chest, like right on his armpit, okay? Like a pit bull, right here. Next thing you wanna do, you don't wanna be extended, you wanna bend your body. So in case you hit the mat, and you will hit the mat eventually, you don't fall on your head, but you fall on your back. And the last thing, you have to swing your body like a pendulum. So the combination of breaking his balance, jumping high on him, and swinging my body is gonna create this twist and pulling motion that will bring him down and turn this arm bar into takedown and the arm bar itself. And as you go, you bring left leg over your partner's head. So once again, jump. And that's where you end up. Make sure uh, that uh, you trap both arms between your legs. That's the best way. Every time you like such or like such, you're leaving doors for him to escape. So always squeeze your knees, cross your feet, and even if you don't snatch arm boy instantly, you're still in a good position. Okay guys, watch from this angle. I landed, make sure your legs are across. Remember about hierarchy of positions. Even if you don't tap him instantly, if he grabs, and the good guy will grab the gear, you still wanna keep him here, right? It's like in boxing, if you punch him but you don't knock him out, you still keep punching him. Same thing here. I can't tap him instantly, I have to work on my arm bar, but I'll keep him here. Legs are not like this. Very tight, very tight. 
squeeze your knees, cross your feet, and start working. If the guy tries to escape, if he starts thrashing him, yeah, forget about the arm lock for a second, just post yourself and regain your positions. Or sometimes what you do, you grab the leg and scoop his, scoop his neck like that, little spine, twist, and just hold him. He's gonna get tired soon or later. And then you let go and you go back for your arm bar. The complete arm bar, guys, is, is a hyper extension. What you do, you hyper extend the joint of elbow. You don't twist it, you don't stretch it, you hyper extend it. What you do, your butt is close to your partner's shoulder, you grab him by the wrist, line the hand up, pinky down, thumb up, okay? Not like this, not like this, but like such. Make sure he stays in this position by squeezing your hips, and now you pull it towards your chest as you arch in your hips simultaneously, like this. Okay guys, let's get over it again. It's a complex technique, but it's very doable, and the harder you train, the easier technique is gonna become. So let's uh, go over some know-how or whatnot. So once again, guys, you have to jump very high. If you don't jump high, that's what's gonna happen. And if he slams you, he's gonna score points and maybe hurt you. You have to get rid of that fear and jump very high and swing your body, okay? Swing your body, you should be like a pit bull on his own, like this, that's what you have to do. Break his balance, make his body, you know, put, it, put his body in a twisting motion jump very high so he bends even lower and swing your body the other way and grab submit guys feet crossed i cannot over emphasize the fact why your feet should be crossed uh, you can't control him like this but once you cross your feet it brings your natural tightness in your hips and knees even more together and it, this allows him to pull his arm out. Once you're here, your options are unlimited. You can do lots of lots of things. As opposed to here, he's capable. And here, he's capable. Once again, grab here, grab here, jump, crotch very high, bend, and swing your body as a pendulum. Okay guys, little uh, something, something you have to remember, a little obstacle that might uh, come your way and, and the way to overcome. Sometimes no matter what you do, guys are very stable on their feet. And even if you do let Chan, he stays up, okay? And in Sambo, you cannot apply submission once you're in the air. Submission must be applied only on the mat for safety purposes. So if you jump and he stays up, as long as you have him, what you want to do, let go, grab his leg, underhook it, and rest him down. Use this elevator to bring your partner down to execute submission safely on the mat. Okay, guys, once again, in a realistic speed, the way it's going to happen in the match. Okay guys, last but not least, you might ask yourself, why doesn't he let me go? The, the only reason he doesn't let me go because I have control of him, not, not him. And that's a very crucial point, guys. Sometimes if you, in Sambo we say there is no wrestling without a grip. So it's very important to have a good grip. If your grip is not good, then your submission is going to be no good. You're going to jump and you're going to slide, okay, like a slug. You're going to jump on him and you're going to slide. Grip. It's crucial. So you let Chan with a dead vice, dead vice grip. So even if you can't tap him, you still stay in the position. Grab on, and you're here, like this, and you work from here. frequently than not guys the guy is gonna grab himself like this okay if you see a straight arm of course take it but for the most part the guy's gonna be grabbing 
And with the gi, you have more options to defend yourself. You can grab yourself here, here, or sleeve, or whatever you want to grab. So uh, the first uh, opening technique is going to be a, a wrist lock. If Tim grabs himself like this, with this hand over, what you have to do, lean forward. Make sure your chest or your belly is against his uh, elbow for leverage. And then with both hands, you want to put your hands on the knuckles and just scoop it. And once you're here, guys, you have the wrist lock, so-called goose lock right here. And you just keep applying. Thank you for taps. Don't forget, uh, you don't have to have that much control maybe, but still, you know, keep a good habit of squeezing him. So you see his elbow has nowhere to go, and I just apply pressure on his wrist, like this. Okay guys, watch from this angle. You have an option to an arm bar. In this position, when the top hand is on top, you can go for a wrist lock, goose lock. Make sure partner's elbow is in your chest, scoop his knuckles with both hands, and you'll create immense amount of leverage. Pull in, peel it off, apply goose lock. Guys, average sambo player, judo player, jujitsu player, grappler has pretty good uh, wrist strength. So sometimes it's like uh, it's like trying to uh, crack a coconut without any tools, trying to pry his arms open. It's very very hard. So remember a couple devices, a couple basic rules. First of all, if you uh, uh, grab right here, I'm gonna be here until you know the, the third coming you're never gonna achieve anything. You have no leverage, and if the guy is any decent, you won't open. So the basic rule, rule of thumb, always go to the wrist, okay? The closer you to the wrist, the more leverage you apply, the easier is to pry him open. So the first technique, and it's my favorite, it always, always works for me. What you wanna do, this hand closest to my partner's head, I wanna stick in like this. And don't stop, you know, in the middle of the forearm. Go deep until your elbow touches his chest. And remember, not here, but as close to his wrist as possible. Okay? Second hand, you're going to lean a little bit, and you want to put it like this, elbow to elbow. Then you're going to connect your hands, and you have a triangle bar, triangle leverage. Now this hand pulls to me, and this hand pushes the elbow away. Like this. and you proceed to do armbar. Okay guys, another way to open your partner's grip via uh, some kind of leverage device, not just, uh, not just this. You wanna put your leg like this, expose your partner's belt. With this hand, hand that's closest to his head, is dug through, you wanna grab his belt. Not the whole two layers, but only the top layer, okay guys? You wanna grab the top, and now you climbing the rope, okay, you squeezing him. How's that, Tim? Uh, it's painful, right? Yes, uh, it is very uncomfortable. It squeezes your rib. It constricts you like an anaconda. Okay, and pull until, and his body language will tell you. He's gonna, he's gonna start, you know, uh, doing this stuff. Okay, so once I'm here, I'm gonna keep my left hand like this. Okay, I'm gonna keep my left hand right there. I'm gonna move my elbow as close to his wrist as possible, like this. Next thing I wanna do, my free hand, I'm gonna post I'm gonna bend my left leg and I'm gonna sit on him. If you feel that you support your, your, your weight on your hand, it's incorrect. You should be sitting on him, okay? You're squeezing him and now you sit on him, pump in the air, like this. And once you feel that you sit on him, what you do, just lift your elbow. Lift your elbow, you can tap him right from here or you can go to conventional arm bar. This way. Okay, guys. Let's review this technique. Put your leg, remember, we prefer this, but once you grab the belt, you assume control of his lower body, so that's okay. And we climb in a rope, okay? <whistles> climb in a rope, like this, squeeze it, maintain the hold, put your elbow towards his wrist, post yourself and scoop. This leg also does little, like, neck cranking. It's not a neck crank, but it pull, puts your spine in such alignment that it's very hard to maintain uh, the hold, it, you know, it, uh, makes you forget about the arm. He wants to give the arm already. Then I post myself and I sit on top of my partner. I squeeze him, I constrict his breathing, 
and now I'm sitting on him, you know, what could be worse? And now leg is this motion, that's like this, you see? Like a cross face with your cap, and now your elbow pops. There we go. Tap him from here, or lean back for conventional armbar. Okay guys, maintaining the same subject, how to pop the good guy open, how to unlock his arms. You hear like this, make sure the rule number one, as close to his wrist as possible, grab him, and now what you do, you do jackhammer. It's a nasty, nasty thing. You feel like you're a woodpecker. You, your head bobs like this and uh, you get dizzy and you let go because you concentrate on other areas other than grabbing yourself. So what you do, let go and do this motion. Like this, and as you do that, you unlock and snatch. It looks silly, but it's super effective. Okay guys, another jumping arm bar. We're gonna start, you know, let's assume that somehow I grab this hold, like this, okay? A uh, few fighters made this uh, arm lock popular, but we're gonna take a, a little different approach. So uh, what normal people, you know, what, what normally people do and assume, they assume a sacrifice throw from here, uh, uh, over the head throw, roll like this, and a follow up with the arm lock. But it's too simple for us. We'll go into something else. So once again, maybe he got the rear on me and I sprawled and I snatched or whatever. Maybe I was here and I leaned over. Long story short, I end up with this kind of hold. And now guys, what I'm gonna do, it's, uh, it looks a little kooky, but it's uh, once again, very doable. And once you get your fear of jumping and turning your backside, to the mat, it's very doable. So what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna jump like I'm doing a head stance, and I'm gonna dive between my partner's legs, okay? Like this, and here I am. I can go into inverted arm lock, or I can go into straight arm bar. Either one. If you wanna throw your leg over, once you get control, throw leg over, you can do that as well. Okay guys, the trick is a two-dimensional jump. Everybody knows how to do forward roll and backward roll, but uh, hold on team for a second. But what you do, you just it's kind of like a Granby roll. You jump and you dive in. It's simple. As long as you know rolls and you have uh, orientation on the mat, it's not so bad. So once again, this is the hole. Let's turn around for a second. Like this, like a chicken wing or kimura if you will. We call it inverted arm lock. Like this. Here I am. I'm applying pressure, of course, you know, I'm applying pressure already. But I cannot do standing on bar here, okay? I have to secure it on the mat. So what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna jump my butt in the air and I'm gonna dive between my partner's legs over there, like this. And my body weight and the arm torque is gonna bring him down and I'm gonna end up in a very good position either for the same arm lock or straight arm bar. Arm bar, arm, arm lock, pardon me, or straight arm bar. If you're quick enough, you can secure it like this. If you want, you can throw legs over. Once again, guys, we'll start wrestling. I'm here, reach over, you know, pull him in, reach over, grab. And now I dive. End up right here. Inverted arm lock. Straight arm, straight arm bar. Okay guys, next arm bar. Sometimes you'll end up in this position like this. 
for, you know, variety of ways you can get there. You know, you just scrambled and you ended up there. Or sometimes you shoot on your guy and he scrolls and he gets you. You shoot, right? And he gets you here and you get stuck. And that's the technique to open it. Which, uh, first thing, guys, first, never stay on your force. Always post your leg. Okay? Always post your leg. Then what you want to do, you want to loop over and grab his elbow. It's very important. Okay? And uh, we're going to look at the uh, scenario when his arms are closed like this. Okay? If it's open, this is an open ticket, this submission. But if they're closed, that's what you do. You want to grab over the elbow and you want to grab like this. Here. And what you do, you goosen his arm, his wrist, and peeling it off. And once you're here, you're doing a hip heist. Oops. This way. Be sure that your body, like this. Be sure, guys, that you like cheek to cheek, shoulder to shoulder. If you end it up too low, it is not going to be on bar. It's very close contact and grappling like close contact. Here, apply pressure downward, use your foot, drive him into the mat and lift up like this. Okay, don't bring it this way, like this, like an airplane taken out. Pinky up. Okay guys, I'm not a good wrestler, I like to play with the key, but sometimes I shoot. And let's say I shot and he was a good wrestler, he sprawled and he body locked me. Like this. Right away, remember mnemonic device, remember your uh, major rule, right away. Leg up. Like this, he's gonna put his hips on my head, sprawl me down, maybe rotate, take my back and all that stuff. I'm gonna be here, you know, sitting, doing nothing. So what you do right away, get an active position. Even as you defend, uh, defending yourself, you should be active right away. Post yourself. There's a variety of things to do here, you know, peek outs and hip highs and so forth. But this is not wrestling. I don't want to just escape. I don't want to do this stuff. I want to submit him. That's the name of the game. So he body locked me. Right away, I'm going to go here, loop around the elbow so he cannot escape my submission anymore. Sneak my arm in here, my hand, and peel off. You see, if I don't do that, nothing's gonna happen. There's nothing stopping his elbow, no leverage. So I get this one here, one here, pop it open, and hip heist. Readjust, be very solid, spread your legs for base, drive into him, and apply on bar. Okay, guys, to make the most out of your leverage, you have to be on top of him, like your armpit, He's on top here, not low. Now his upper body is mobile. You want to crush him, okay? Spread your legs for balance. Lift up, drive with your leg on top of him, dissect him like a lab frog, and lift up his arm. Make sure that his pinky is looking up. His elbow is rotated towards the ceiling, and so is his pinky. That's the best way, most efficient way to do the arm bar. Okay guys, the next technique is an arm lock, or it could be arm bar, it could be uh, done uh, both ways. Start standing up, and because of superior control, because we have geese, we can do it. Usually in uh, uh, submission grappling, it's not so prevalent, because uh, you don't have as much control with the key. And uh, uh, what I'm going to do is called kasoy zakhvat in Russian, which, is mean, which means cross grip. It's a very typical sambo grip. Grips are extremely important sambo. There's two ways to do to achieve the cross hold, kasoy zakhvat. You can either arm drag your partner, like this, or if he already grabs you, what you want to do, put both hands here, step towards him, break it, like this, and lean over. And that's your kasoy zakhvat. It's very similar to uh, <coughs> wrestling, a Russian two on one, they call it, okay? But we have gi, so you grab the gi, and you reach over, grab him either by the belt, or armpit, or the epaulet right here. Somewhere in the back, it doesn't really matter. It uh, all depends on your taste. Okay, so like this. And uh, that's like ultimate sambo grip. And you can do a variety of things here. Submissions, takedowns, throws, anything. So here you are. What you do, guys, pinch his arm towards your chest. Superior control. And what you do with this elbow, we call it loading up. You want to apply pressure. Down, down. It's not a pressure point, it's just, you know, just a weight. 
okay? You weigh him down. And now as you thrust your chest in, you walk him down. Walk him down like this, and there you are. And you have your uh, bent arm lock or shoulder lock. Put your chest down and up. If somehow he straightens the arm, if you lack in control, you switch into the one before. Like this. Okay guys, once again in details, you're gonna achieve the cross grip whichever way you would like, arm, uh, arm drag or breaking him down right here. Remember guys, sometimes you have to uh, assume dominance at first. You can't go into arm bar right away. You have to make sure you control him. Okay, like this. And he cannot do anything. Get your arms away, uh, legs away from him, apply pressure, apply pressure, and then you take him down. If you want to be vicious, you can snap. But of course, it's not sportsman, sportsman like, so you want to walk him down. You apply pressure gradually and you walk him down. Chest or belly in his shoulder, elbow is locked, and you lift on his wrist. Arm lock like this. If somehow he was able to power out, but you still have the arm, switch your grip into this kind of arm bar. Okay guys, uh, now we're going to uh, look at the reverse wrist lock from crossbody mount. Little note though, in a conventional sports sambo, you're not allowed to wrist lock. Okay, you can uh, wrist lock in grappling and in freestyle sambo and in no holes barred, if you can, you know, because of the gloves. But nevertheless, it's a legitimate technique and that's how it's done. I'm going to assume the hold, hold down like this, okay. And sometimes what the guys do, they make a crucial mistake of putting the palm on my shoulder to push me off. They're trying to bridge or whatnot, just like this, okay? So what you want to do, you want to let go of the head, or you can start from here without the head. As soon as he does that, you want to grab his elbow, like this, okay? Grab and pull it into you. Reinforce with the second one. You see what's happening to his wrist? It's already bent. Okay, it's bent, it's ready to go. Now, I have to actually apply the motion that, you know, hyper extends the joint. And the way to do that is not simply apply power chest down. If you do that, nothing's going to happen. Your chest is going to hit the heel of his palm. And right team, you feel comfortable. Yes, so what you do in order to execute the wrist bar, the wrist lock, you pull the elbow clockwise or counterclockwise, like this. Okay, guys. Reverse wrist lock. You have to be very quick and time it very nicely. Because if he puts his hand right here, he's not gonna be here forever. He's either gonna buck you off or change his grip, okay? So once you're here, act quickly. It's a lucky thing, you know. Uh, experienced guy will not maybe get himself in this kind of trouble, but nevertheless, legitimate submission. He puts hand here, grab the elbow, reinforce with the second one, and apply the reverse three slug by rotating the elbow like this. Okay guys, back to this situation, regular crossbody armbar. What we're going to cover is called the uh, inverted armbar, or as we call it at Samba, uh, armbar on the far arm. Okay, this is going to be close arm armbar, and this is going to be a second one. Sometimes what they do, uh, guys with strength, they try to grab you with, with this arm. This arm. Like this. And pull you in. Or come with a variation, you can grab the head, from this side, sorry, and like throw a knee in, in my head, like this, okay? So, strong guys sometimes tend to do that, they grab your head, grab your head or something. So once he grabs, he's giving me the arm. I'm gonna neglect this one, I'm gonna grab like this. Don't grab with your hand, this is too cushy. You, you'll still do the arm bar, but you wanna apply also, uh, afflict as much pain as possible. You wanna shrug your shoulder and lock his hand like this. Okay, it's very important. If you don't lock it, rotation two or three degrees out of the alignment is gonna give him breathing room. It's gonna take the pain away somewhat. So you wanna shrug it, lock it, 
grab yourself like this and pull it in. That's the inward arm bar. Okay guys, very often in sambo matches you end up like this without the ability of popping his arms open. Right now Tim only has one arm for demonstration purposes. Of course he's going to be defending with both hands, like this. And no matter what you do, the guy is strong. You can't get on him, you can't get to his wrist. He's like a walnut, like a coconut. So one of your options is what? Is bicep crush, very legitimate technique. In my book, however, it's uh, not 100% because bicep crushes could be tolerated by definition, okay? Arm bar cannot, you'll snap the arm. But if you have uh, pain tolerance, you can actually withstand this one. However, mostly people will tap. So what you wanna do, guys, you wanna grab like this. Uh, this hand, closest to his legs, sneaks through. You wanna put your thumb towards your chest like this. Okay, towards your chest, not like this, like this. This leg is gonna come over and lock, apply pressure, okay? On this side of the head. And the second leg reinforces the pressure. You can figure four or you can scissor, it doesn't matter. And now what you do, you're gonna lean back and start a car, okay? Boom, like this. Now your blade of your forearm is gonna eat up his uh, bicep and his forearm, causing him, you know, agony and possible death. Okay, guys, another option for arm bar in case you can't open his arms. Very painful submission, very good one, called bicep crush. What you wanna do, you wanna put your hand like this, thumb towards your chest, flat, lock your leg like this on this side, reinforce the pressure. As you squeeze your knees and push his wrist down, you twist your forearm like this. But of course, it's all reinforced. You wanna pull in as well. Okay guys, all the pain is inflicted on his uh, belly here, on his bicep and the forearm via twisting my forearm and my blade eating up into his muscle. Okay guys, next bicep crush. Now instead of leaning with this hand, you lean with this one. And sometimes what guys do, they sit up, they sit up and they stack you and they escape. Yes. So this version is a little bit more complicated because there is rotation involved. Okay, my partner sits up like this. I'm going to throw leg over and rotate. I can pose myself if I want, but this hand always stays here. Rotate and end up like this in this position. He's on his horse, I'm on my back, his wrist in my knee notch right here. Reinforce once again, grab yourself, squeeze, pull, and start the car. Okay guys, you're here and team wants to escape. Let's look at the escape just by itself. That's what he wants to do to me. Go. And that's how I'm going to counter with a bicep crush. Once again, I have this hand from his head side snuck in. As soon as he starts sitting up, I'm gonna throw leg over. As he goes on his knees, I rotate with him. I go with the flow and I reverse the situation. He stays on his fours and I go on my back. Like this. And that's where I am. See the triangle? Forearm, bicep, and my forearm. Reinforce with a figure four. Pull into me and twist. Lock his arm up, squeeze your knees, and start the car. Twist. And of course, I just want you to see, but you want to reinforce with the second hand. Pull, and twist. Okay, guys. Next technique is a uh, reverse wrist lock. And um, I guess I was lucky to execute it in... Uh, uh, inspiring sessions, but it's doable, especially when guys mount in you and he goes for figure four, you know, uh, arm lock and he gets maybe a little careless or whatnot and he relaxes because he's in a superior position. And if I time this right, it's a very, very doable technique. So Tim goes for figure four, your conventional arm lock like this, just like such, okay? And somehow he just got sloppy. 
So what I want to do, guys, watch. I want to put my hand against his elbow. Why? So there is a leverage, okay? Right now he's moving. Nothing is going to be applying uh, pressure. One here, I'm going to hip out a little bit, get on my side like this, get some strength, and I'm going to grab my own wrist like this. And now my head pushes into that side, and this hand coming towards me, therefore applying reverse wrist lock like this. Especially good if you have gi and he grab. If your hand is slippery, he might slip out. It happens. But if you have the gi, there's more traction. Okay? You trap, grab, and right there. Okay, guys, relaxed or sloppy execution of figure four arm lock on his behalf. He goes for it. Okay? Right away, you want to flex up a little bit. Hip out, put your cheek, your head against his elbow, reach, grab your own hand, and pull in, hands executing reverse wrist lock. Okay guys, do you know the saying, fight fire with fire? That's exactly what we're going to do right now. I'm going to counter team's inverted arm lock or Kimura from the guard by an arm bar. Team starts applying the arm lock, okay, inverted arm lock. The only condition I have to do, we'll look at both versions. The first one, if his legs are open, okay, he starts latching on, it was like a time thing, he latched on, and before he locked his legs, because otherwise I won't be able to do that, before he locked his legs, what I have to do, I have to lean on top of him, put my body on top of his, jump out and spin, rotate clockwise or counterclockwise like this and go for the straight on bar. Okay guys, watch again. Teams try, trying to snatch inverted arm lock. Before he closed his legs, before he scissored them, it's going to be too late. Before he did that, I want to lean forward, go with the pressure, okay? I don't want to go against it, I want to go with him, put my weight on top of him, hop over his leg. Some people would be happy because they just pass the guard and score points, but our mentality is finish him. So after I hop, I just continue rotation. And because of his arms entanglement, I pull him right in my trap. Okay guys, in this particular scenario, Tim is snatching reverse arm lock and he does have his legs crossed, so I cannot jump over. The first thing you do is first, right away try to grab yourself or flex or something. Of course, gi is the best way to counter, okay? And once you're here, the first thing you do is drop on your elbow, like this. Now we have a little friction going on and it's going to be very hard for Tim to break my grip and arm lock here. Okay, so here I am. I have a little breather. Next thing, I want to take my hand and put it on the inside of his knee, not the top, on the inside, and just slide it down my hips and scooch out like a cat through a hole in the fence. As I scooch out and pass, once again, his arm locks, uh, his arm lock is turning against him. I'm here and I flatten him out like this and apply the same arm lock against him. That's why I'm ending up. Sometimes, guys, if you want, you can throw this leg over to immobilize him to kill his base. And here's the arm lock. Inverted arm lock versus inverted arm lock. So here's your arm lock. You can go just like this. Make sure you apply the pressure so he cannot roll out. Or sometimes you can throw a leg and hook it like this to kill his base so he can't push with his legs anymore and do exactly the same thing. Okay, team grabs me and tries to apply inverted arm lock like this. If he goes on, he'll tap me. So first thing, 
he's in defensive posture. Grab yourself so he cannot break your hold. Second thing, roll on this elbow, on the elbow of submitted arm. That will create pressure, uh, friction between your arm and the mat. So it's going to be hard for Tim to open me up. Try. Yeah, it's hard. I'm applying pressure. <laughs> Next thing, this hand goes on the inside of his knee. Now the top once again on the inside and prise him open like this. Once he's here, his legs are open, lift your butt, walk over his leg, this way, circle out, pull him to flatten him out, and here it is. Chicken wing versus chicken wing, or arm lock versus arm lock. You grab yourself, you want to grab him for control maybe, maybe scoop his leg, and now you lean back and lift up his hand. Okay guys, we're going to cover, you know, one arm bar from uh, the guard. Everybody knows, you know, conventional arm bar. There is a couple ways to set it up. The simple way is uh, grab, you know, the hand, move your hips, pull, put his arm across your body, underhook this leg like this, bring this one over, and go like this, unlock him. You see that this setup or something similar, you know, it's all about moving your hips and the faking and all that stuff. So I'm not going to cover that, I assume that you know it. What I'm going to do is a little uh, fake or a little trick or whatnot. Usually, if I grab this arm, right, if I grab this arm, I have to rotate to this side to unlock you. But sometimes, either as a genuine mistake, believe it or not, kids do it, you know, beginners do it, or as a setup, what I do, I start rotating this way. And sometimes people expect so-called omoplato from here and whatnot, their shoulder lock. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick to the straight arm block. But I just have to switch my hips. It's all about timing and hip movement. So I'm here, and instead of rotating this way, I brought this leg over. So he thinks about omoplato. But what I do, I switch my hips once again, bring this leg over his head, like this. It's a little strangle action. It's not a legitimate choke. But you squeeze, you make him uncomfortable, and you proceed with a standard arm block. Okay guys, for the most part they wouldn't see it coming because it's a little uh, cookie, either because of a genuine mistake or a setup, fake or whatnot. If I go for this arm, I don't rotate this way, I go this way. So he expects something else, but what I do, I switch my hips real quick to you know, the other side, like this, bring this leg over, squeeze, and proceed with the regular arm bar. So guys, when you got in this position, make sure your hips are up. What you do in gymnastics, they have exercise called perch, and that's what you want to do. Okay, you want to throw your crotch under his elbow, otherwise he'll limp arm out. So you're here, you move here, and throw your hips up. Make sure his elbow is beyond the point of extension. If team pull through, no arm bar to speak of. Right here, your hips up, Plenty of extension room for me. Hips up, squeeze, squeeze neck, and arm bar. Okay, guys, escapes from arm bar now, because that's what uh, identifies the skill of a fighter. You can teach a monkey how to fight. But the true intelligent fighter is the one who can escape, or better yet, not to get there, of course. So, uh, let's look at uh, four scenarios. Uh, I mean, uh, two scenarios and uh, two escapes for each one. First one, if Timmy is about to unlock my arm, or unlock it already, and it's on its way. So once I feel it, guys, once I feel I cannot hold on anymore, I want to pummel my hand in. Okay, remember I told you the escapes? I want to pummel it in and put it here. And once I feel I cannot hold on anymore, I'm going to let go. And it's very, very much depending on your timing. Because if you just relax, you want to snatch it and arm bar you. So as he goes down, you want to rotate your hand like this, like you're hitchhiking. 
thumb towards him, that gets you immediately out of alignment to get unlocked. Okay? He can, if you don't move, he's going to readjust it and unlock you anyway. So you have to move. As soon as you feel it's coming, you want to put your thumb this way. You want to get on this shoulder, opposite shoulder, not the one he's unlocking, the opposite. Push his legs down your waist and run clockwise. Like this. Remember, there's a couple dangers. One, you can be uh, omoplatoed or you can get triangled. But uh, just like in case with multiple opponents, you fight one at a time. You don't fight ten guys. You fight one guy, second guy, third guy, and so forth and so on. So you take care of your priorities as they come in. And as long as you're aware that you can be triangled or unlocked this way, you're good. Okay? So you won't get caught in transition. Let's look at it again. Okay? You feel you're about to be unlocked. You can't hold on anymore. Pummel this hand in. Put it here, because you have to push down. As he unlocks you, hitchhike, thumb down, get on opposite shoulder, push it down, rotate, stay here. Remember, we'll try and go on a plateau and try pull your arm in. All right, guys. In the first case, we ended up with hand here. In the second one, let's, you know, imagine somehow, and it can happen, that your hand is this way like this, okay? So what you want to do, as soon as he starts unlocking you, now instead of hitchhiking, you, you know, war and death through gladiator, you want to put your thumb down like this, once again, to just, uh, just to get your arm out of alignment to be tapped instantly. So as he's about to snatch it, you turn, and you buck once again, and you throw your uh, partner's legs over your head, like this. And then you keep his hip him. And right away, as soon as you can, grab his neck and cradle him. Get a good position, establish yourself. So you escape, you score points, and then you start working towards a submission. Okay, guys, simple things and simple details can uh, warrant you a victory or a defeat, unfortunately. So once you're here, and let's imagine, let's, you know, look at the scenario. Your hand ended up not on this side, but on this side, and team snatched your arm. Point your thumb down, this way, okay? And throw his legs over your head. And remember, guys, he's flattening himself out. His body goes this way, so it's good for you, actually. So you go this way, throw off, instantly hip heist, which means bring his leg over like this, and try to grab Tim's gi, his kurtka, rather, or his neck, as soon as possible, and cradle him. So his position is totally backfired on him. He started with an arm bar and he ended up in being uh, held down like this. Okay, in this scenario, team latch down and I have a good grip, okay? I have good grip and there is no chance he's gonna break it. However, you don't wanna stay here, you wanna escape. And we're gonna look at three escapes from here. The first one, Keep nice and tight. And what you want to do, you want to start hipping out, shrimping out a little bit, bumping him off. And what you want to do, you want to put your elbow on the mat. Okay? This elbow of submitted arm, you want to put on the mat. Therefore, you're going to pass this dangerous point of extension. Okay? If he's here, he can unlock me. If I'm, let go for a second. If I'm here, he cannot. And that's what I'm doing. It's very small, tiny motions. It's not an explosive motion. First two escapes, straight arm, they timing. This one is patience. You have to be very patient when you're in the bad position. So once you're here, you're just bumping him out, turning towards him, and sooner or later, boom, my elbow hit the mat. You see, now I can let go. He cannot unlock me anymore. And so once I'm here, I'm gonna hip heist again, get up, and cradle him again. So guys, once you're here, you have a good grip. Don't be happy though, don't be satisfied. Sooner or later, he'd find you know, an opening uh, device for you. So move on before you get tired, before lactic acid builds in, and before he snaps your arms open. What you wanna do, you wanna very patiently and a short moves, you wanna start moving, keeping out and bumping him, bumping him, until the elbow of submitted arm hits the mat. Now you're not in danger anymore. You can let go if you want, 
Grab his leg, hip heist, hop, put him in the cradle. Next escape. Guys, remember uh, that we depend on our hips a lot. We do a lot of hip heist. And you have to depend on your bridge. It's very important. We'll talk later in a fitness tape about your bridge. And on the hip heist. Okay? You cannot start feeling and post yourself to help yourself with this arm. Once this arm is here, this arm is lonely and it's going to be snatched, okay? And victimized. So always support yourself with two hands. Grab your gi or like this, always two hands. So what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to bridge and I want to put him on this part of his body, like this. Okay? And remember, you can't start posting yourself. So it's tricky. That's when the skill comes. And as I do that, as I buck him and put him on his side, I'm going to hip heist and stack him. Okay, so I'm here, here, watch, now I'm hip heisting and stacking him. Once I stack him, if there was, if there was no gi, I try to limp arm like this, which is still very dangerous. Some guys are waiting for that, but you can limp arm if you time it nicely. But with the gi, there is a lot of friction. So what you do, you do jackhammer, little motions. You Bump in again, and once I feel my elbow is passed, I can't let go. Okay? Or sometimes on our defense, uh, I figure for myself like this, and this hand goes beyond this. So it's excellent locking device for him not to unlock me. Okay? Sometimes your fingers get tired from grabbing the gi, lactic acid. So a figure four, and this one behind his knee. And you jackhammer, boom. Once you're here, just remember, Mentality of a winner. Once you got out of a good position, don't go like this. Whoo! Move on right away. Either leg lock or some kind of hold down, okay? Let's review, guys. I'm gonna buck, put him on his left side of the body, hip heist, and stack. Like this. Hip heist. Get like this. Apply pressure, stack him, and very, in small increments, pull my arm out and go into cradle or whatever and hold him down bridge buck him over on his side like this don't pause yourself hip heist stack him jackhammer out and pass Okay guys, this escape is a follow-up from the previous, but it's designed for a guy who holds on tighter and who's got better base, okay, who, uh, who offers more obstacles along the way. So you hear, original escape is the same, you're gonna butt and put him on his side. But now, his leg is too heavy on my neck, I can't get up anymore, I can't get up and get in an upright position on my knees. So what I do, I'm gonna step over his body with both legs, one, and a second one. And we end up like this. I just posted myself for demonstration purposes, but never do that. As you pause him, that's when he's gonna snatch your arm. Okay guys, always hold on. Rely on your neck, on your head, and on your hips. And once you're here, once again, stack him, make him uncomfortable, move, and jackhammer. Jackhammer, small increments, small motions. Boom, pull it out, grab him, and cradle. Okay guys, buck, put him on his side, hip heist, but you cannot get up like this anymore. Okay, so what you do, maintain hold with both arms and jump over his body. Like this and like this. And stack him. Stack, jackhammer, apply pressure, cradle. Okay guys, now we'll look at applying uh, arm bars and wrist locks and things like such in a self-defense scenario. The first attack is very unorthodox, but yet common and very painful hair grab. Goes for women especially. You cannot grab Tim or me, but you can grab uh, Chief Instructor Ivan Kulikov. So if she grabs, if Tim grabs her hair, 
The first thing you do right away, guys, is you want to control the wrist. Because if you don't grab, he's going to play a ragdoll with you. Your first, uh, first move is right hand comes on top, and left hand comes like uh, in L shape facing you. The first thing you do is just apply a simple leverage technique. Just step back and, and re yes, and do this uh, reverse wrist lock. Sometimes if you well time it and do it especially in a vicious way, he let go right there. You might lose some hair, but if somebody grabs you this way, guys, it means the situation got out of hand. And now your objective is nearly survival. So it's okay to lose a couple of hairs, but mess him up, right? So uh, first thing is basic reverse wrist lock. She grabs, steps back. And then what she wants to do, she wants to apply what we call upside down wrist lock. Particularly vicious and painful wrist lock uh, that uh, uh, dislocates and breaks uh, arm in few places, actually. So what Mama's gonna do, she's gonna step with her right, through, close, rotate, and apply this kind of wrist lock. Fingers looking down, both hands on Tim's hand, like this, elbow up. It's very important to have both hands on the hand because if she grabs the wrist with her left hand, which means she's supporting the wrist, like boxers, they tape the wrist to support them. That's what she's doing, she's not breaking it. So both grips on the hand, therefore wrist is fragile. She can control him and do come along or in this case, she probably wants to break it. If she continues this motion, it's going to snap the wrist. And it's always an open break. It's a spiral break. Bone goes right through your skin and dislocates the elbow as well. So let's see at this technique once again in a you know relatively slow motion from A to Z. Okay guys, we're gonna go right into combat sambo. I'm gonna skip hand to hand. I'm gonna go into very dangerous situation, gun. Some people claim they can uh, defend the gun from five feet away. I, I cannot do that. I cannot make such claims. But what we can do is uh, teach you close quarter combat with the guns and knives. Because once the guy is here, he doesn't want to shoot you. If he wants to shoot you, he'll do the Washington thing, all right? But if he's here, he wants to threaten you probably or take your money. So what team is gonna do, attack the head from so-called blind side. Okay, which means she cannot turn into him. It's a blind side. The first thing she's gonna do right away, raise her hands. There is not a macho thing going on here. Her subjective, objective, pardon me, is survival, okay? So whatever he expects her to do, she should do to gain the upper hand, to make his guard drop, to make him relaxed, to make him feel in control. So right away, maybe she's going to vocalize, oh, please, please, no, I'll give you whatever you want, and she's going to raise hands, which is universal sign of surrender. But what she's doing, indeed, is uh, getting prepared for her submission, which is going to be diving on bar. So very quickly, she's going to rotate her head. It's very important. If she tries to grab his hand, he's going to shoot her. If she wants to move around, she's going to shoot her. So the only thing that's gonna give you a split second of advantage is that head rotation, once again, just like this, okay? With immediate follow-up by a technique. As soon as she does that, she does a knife hand, grabs it with the other hand, and shoots her left leg through and, dive, and dives in. Breaks the arm, removes the gun, gets the possession of it, and gets out. Once again, she raises her hands, Please no, universal no, sign of please surrender. No. Knife hand, follow up with other hand. You see her whole body weight goes on top of Tim's and snap his arms, snap his arm on the way. And if he didn't snap on the way down, she's gonna secure it and snap it there and remove the gun. Always remove the gun. No, please no.
No, please, no. Okay, guys, unfortunate reality of our days, rapes. The only, not the only, but for the most part, the rapes are getting taken, uh, taken part in this kind of position, right? The guys in between uh, uh, the victim's legs and maybe choking her. I've seen this move done in professional fighting, okay? So, therefore, you can do it on a guy who doesn't know too much about fighting, who's thinking about one thing and trying to choke you. What he gives you, he gives you an advantage of straight arms. So the trained person, even a female, can snatch that double armbar instantly. So what Mem is gonna do, the first thing she's gonna just pluck a little bit so he doesn't choke her instantly. Just pluck, okay? Don't grab the thumbs, it takes so much time. Just, just like this, once again, please. Pluck. Then she's gonna walk up her guard high on Tim's neck, cross her feet, squeeze her knees, and extend hips. <clears throat> Okay, guys, uh, rape scenario. Once you hear, if you train in submission or in samba or in jiu-jitsu, it's not the end of the fight. It's actually good for you. So don't panic. You are in advantage here because uh, you train in this position for many hours. And uh, what the guy is doing, he's giving you presents, early Christmas presents, straight arms. If he's choking, block right away, very quick. Walk up your guard high. Cross your feet, squeeze your knees, and extend your hips. And here was ours popping. Pop, 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 and just break them apart. I hope you guys enjoyed the unlock tapes. Uh, although those are traditional uh, sambo, arm bars and arm locks used with the kurtka, you can also use it in gi. Uh, in jiu-jitsu and uh, judo and uh, I hope it gave you a little different perspective because we all know jiu-jitsu which is prevalent grappling style but I think it's just different outlook and I hope you uh, gain something new from those tapes. From the ultimate school also in New Jersey, he is the Russian Sambo champion in the 175 pound category.
Come on, Vlad. There's no pinpoint. So, no. Way to go! Yeah, blood! <laughs>